Looks like there's some massive new battle suit changes in store for the greater good this week. Crisis suits getting separated out into three different data sheets. A fairly brutal new detachment for battle suit bombs dropping close to the enemy and delivering mass damage. And potentially news of some units being removed from the codex. Let's talk Tau and what we've got from Games Workshop. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Tau. And while much of Games Workshop's previews so far have been hype things around the new crew, now we finally get to look at the Force of the Greater Good proper a bit more and talk about how some things are changing with the new book, their last preview article mainly focusing on battle suits. Codex Tau Empire has basically been officially confirmed for this week. It's first going to be coming out in the Crew Hunting Pack box set. That one goes for pre-order on Saturday. And then the individual release for that will be really quite a lot later in a similar sort of style to the Dark Angels ones. As with them, it seems likely that we won't actually get the new points cost for the Codex until quite a bit later again. And the ones printed in the book will be redundant. In this video, I thought I'd focus on the Battlesuit previews. First up, we've got Crisis Suits being broken down into three different unit classes, though unfortunately disallowed Crisis Suit loadouts are going to Legends, which I think isn't going to please some people. The Retaliation Cadre is the name of the Battle Suit Damage Up Close one. It does feel fairly Montcar. I don't know whether we'll get a specific detachment called Montcar in the book. That remains to be seen. We've got the core rule for that revealed alongside some stratagems. And besides that, from the teaser article the other day, it's confirmed that there's 38 data sheets in the codex, meaning that just with basic maths, some of them are going to be cut out and removed. And with the same data sheet counts, it looks like there's going to be a new combat patrol fairly confirmed now. That was generally on the cards anyway, but they've confirmed that the number of data sheets for combat patrol is changing, which must mean they're coming out with a new one. Loads to talk about here, so let's jump straight in. First up, let's start with these crisis suit loadouts. I feel like Crisis Suits have often been a slightly problem unit for Games Workshop. In the past, they've often had to try and make them work with multiple different loadouts all in the same unit. Even with changing war gear and points costs as they could do in 8th and 9th edition, they often seem to be an optimal way to play the squad. It's kind of hard to balance all the weapons equally. When they could take multiple weapons of the same class as well, it usually made sense just to double up on the same thing to try and make them a bit more specialist, and that was something they also had to contend with. I did think that the 9th edition version of the Crisis Suit datasheet was interesting enough. They had some slightly complex rules that meant that you paid more per gun if you doubled up on it. It was kind of interesting. It meant that you often wanted to, say, maybe take two of one gun or one of each, as opposed to just massively spamming the exact same one. I feel like more than most rule sets, that genuinely did quite well to make multiple different builds of Crisis Suit viable, which was kind of interesting. 10th edition so far felt like a big step back in terms of war gear. In this edition, you don't pay for individual pieces of war gear on any unit now, and it did just mean that the guns just literally had to compete against each other just for pure damage. As a result, they wrote the data sheets, and then everyone just zeroed in on the cyclic ion blasters as the most general purpose weapon they had. Even with the threat of fairly big hazardous rolls to hit back at the unit, they're the ones that got spammed. Mass AP2 and damage 2, strength 8 shooting just seemed to be the way to go. Now though, it looks like that's no longer going to be the case, and it does look like cyclic ion blasters just might not be an option altogether, which I did kind of expect. Now, coming in the 10th edition codex, there's going to be three different options for Crisis Suits units that you can field. It means that there's going to be multiple different choices for perhaps the most iconic Tau choice. Previously, we had two units of them, though they removed that Crisis Bodyguards option in early 10th edition. Now we're going to get three different data sheets based around iconic loadouts from the lore. A Sunforge one with two fusion blasters, a Fire Knife one mixing plasma rifles and missile launchers, and a star scythe one mixing burst cannons and flamers. With the preview that they gave us, they didn't 100% confirm exactly what loadouts they would have. The Sunforge one does seem pretty set. I don't know if there's going to be any flexibility with the gun choices on Fire Knife or Star Scythe. I feel like there's a pretty reasonable chance it's just going to be one of each gun on those two. Though I guess it's possible they might allow you to double up on one type. We'll wait and see there, I suppose. As it goes, I feel like it's maybe not the worst ever solution to the 10th edition problems. It's certainly one way to stop crisis suits just from spamming cyclic ion blasters everywhere. It means that these three different units can all be costed based on their war gear and how much use those guns are. So often, if there's a big heavy hitting one that can take down enemy tanks or monsters, it might cost a bit more compared with an infantry clearing one perhaps. 
and it does mean that you could have weapon loadouts that are either more or less powerful, rather than arbitrarily having to design everything to be roughly the same power so it doesn't just outcompete things. It also allows each unit to get a different special rule as well. They showed off the Sunforge one. Each time this model makes a ranged attack against a monster or vehicle unit, you get to re-roll the wound roll and re-roll a damage roll. That means that even with their strength 9, the fusion blasters will be wounding really quite consistently there, and the damage re-rolls are very nice to have as well. If you can get them hitting accurately with some guiding shenanigans, maybe with tetras, you basically have a tower version of eradicators there pretty much, for re-rolls of everything against their ideal prey. It also means that if you wanted to try and do just maximal crisis suits for an army, you could have 9 different units in an army list. They didn't 100% confirm if you could take 6 of them in a unit still, though I'd guess you probably would. If they limit them down to 3, that would be a bit disappointing. For the most part, I feel like having some different crisis suit data sheets is kind of interesting from a rules point of view, though from a practical hobbying, modelling and customization point of view, it definitely has some big downsides. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Tower Empire players out there looking at their collections and having realised they've now got glued in illegal combos that Games Workshop has just promptly got rid of. Apparently they're going to be making use of the Legend system to have a Legends unit for the standard Crisis suits with the mixed war gear options. Anything that's not represented by those data sheets, it does feel a bit arbitrary that you can't say have a fusion blaster next to a missile pod anymore, or you can't have a plasma rifle and a burst cannon. That was another at least fairly common loadout. And I feel like there's going to be a bit of resistance to that, as you've been able to mix and match any gun you want for really quite a long time now. It never really feels good when Games Workshop takes modelling options away from you. On top of that, they didn't say it in the article, but I strongly suspect that both air bursting fragmentation projectors and cyclic ion blasters will be gone on these units now. This one shouldn't really be coming as a surprise to people, given the way that they do things in 10th edition, but neither of these guns come in the actual crisis suit set, they're just options on the commander kit. And as per classic Games Workshop, no model, no rules, I feel like the writing was already on the wall for them. I must admit it must be a bit annoying for people who've wanted to field optimal crisis suits in early 10th, probably having to get third party bits or convert up a whole ton of cyclic ion blasters than for Games Workshop just to pull the plug on that particular weapon. Overall I'll be interested to hear what Tower players make of this, I've got slightly mixed feelings about the update, I feel like the rules should stop the 100% spam of just one weapon, I do quite like the idea of more dedicated crisis teams with certain weapon loadouts dropping in to deal damage to the enemy in one way or another, but at the same time it's a bit sad that crisis suits are now far less flexible than they've basically ever been in the past without you being able to fully customise your weapon hard points. I guess the main customization for the unit will now be the support systems, shield generators versus the battlesuit support things, plus the choice of drones for bolt-on extra guns essentially, or extra wounds. Finally, while we're sticking with the crisis suits, it does look like the commanders haven't really changed too much. They confirmed that the various variants of commander will be able to lead any of those three units, as you'd expect really. They're going to still get fully flexible weapon choices, and I guess it could be kind of interesting to combine them with the units. You could have a commander with a bunch of heavy weapons and get the re-rolls to wound against monsters and vehicles. That seems okay on paper. And they did confirm that the special rules for the Enforcer and the Cold Star Commander will be remaining unchanged. The Enforcer makes them better against lower AP attacks, whereas the Cold Star gives them a big 12-inch moves and makes the guns assault. Still going to be very good for delivering things to close range. Though I guess there's a reasonable chance that not all of those crisis suits will be able to auto-advance 6 anymore. Otherwise, that preview article was really fixating on the battle suits. The other big rules preview that we got was the retaliation cadre. This one's really focusing on battle suits as the class of the army. It looks like all the buffs and support are going to be focused around things in the tower's iconic way to play. The core rule for the army is bonded heroes, and it's basically a damage buff up close for the battle suits. This will be in place of the Kalyon overarching rule for the detachment, giving you big sustained hits on turn 3 to 5, so it would get rid of that in place of this. The rule only applies to battlesuit models and ranged attacks only. If they're within 12 inches of their target, they get plus 1 strength, and if they're within 6 inches of their targets, they get an extra AP. Both of those are going to make the squads of battlesuits really quite a lot more vicious, though it does depend on getting up close. The strength buff is variable depending on your target, whenever it actually translates to a plus one to wound that is going to be a big deal, maybe particularly nice for things getting to common breakpoints, 
maybe missile pods to strength 8, flamers to strength 5, or fusion to strength 10, all of that does sound rather good. With the 12-inch range, it does mean that you can get plus 1 strength right out of deep strike as well. It does seem quite nice for, I guess, that star scythe pattern deep strike again. You'd be able to hit the enemy with strength 6 burst cannons and strength 5 flamers. That would be making them better against clearing out toughness 3 and 4 infantry. The AP debuff is perhaps even more useful, but you have to get in very, very close there to within 6 inches. That's not going to be able to be something that you can do out of deep strike without some stratagem support. And it often means that you really have to make sure that you actually destroy the enemy unit, otherwise they're going to hit you back very hard with optimal damage output. Might be good to have Cold Star Commanders about to deliver units to those close ranges, and I think that in general it would be most helpful for lower AP things. Getting just a bit of AP on burst cannons and flamers is quite a big deal. Though I guess with easy cover saves going around in 10th edition, it's maybe not the worst to have it on higher AP stuff too. It does mean that battle suits will be hitting far harder when they're locked in close combat and firing within engagement range with big guns never tire as well. They'll be getting both of those buffs there. For the retaliation cadre, they gave us two of the stratagems previewed. There's a big exciting one called the shortened blade for 2CP. This one is a fairly standard one throughout some other 40k detachments, allowing a unit to drop anywhere that's greater than 3 inches away from the enemy. As per normal, you can't charge after, and compared with most other detachments, it costs 2 CP rather than 1, though I guess that might be balanced out slightly by doing it on a very meaningful unit, and one that maybe has more scary range damage versus quite a lot of other stuff out there in the game. It does seem pretty intimidating to think of those Sunforge battle suits dropping down at 3 inches, really hard to screen against enemy heavies, and strike at you with a bunch of strength 10 AP5 fusion blasters, re-rolling wounds and damage results, that's going to be almost guaranteed for a vehicle kill, even if it's big investment. The other stratagem is the Torch Star Gambit. This one's a 1 command point jump shoot jump one. You target a fly battlesuit unit and it gets to do a normal move after shooting. So kind of similar to the one in the Index Kaoyon detachment, except it only costs 1 CP, meaning that this one feels like it's probably going to be also used just about every turn. For a Cold Star Commander, that means a unit could be just going ridiculously fast across the board. 12 inch move plus an advance and then shoot and then trigger this for an extra 1 command point and you get another 12 inch move after that. You could jump all the way into the enemy deployment zone or onto a far flung objective if it made sense or perhaps most commonly jump out, shoot something very hard and then move your second move to hide yourself behind terrain so the unit can't get shot back and retaliated against. Overall looks like really good news for the detachment so far. The core rules usable enough even though it does mean that you need to get close and play smart and both of the stratagems are powerful options. I feel like the jump shoot jump is perhaps the more meaningful, though if you're going for big investments, then getting that firepower exactly where you need it to be does seem something that your opponent really can't counter that well. Otherwise, I just thought I'd touch on something that was mentioned in the last preview article, in that data sheets look like they're going to be removed for the Tau. Currently, I believe that Tau have 37 data sheets in their core index. The Codex preview said that they'd have 38 data sheets in the Codex, though we do know there's going to be a massive amount of new ones added as well, and that does mean that there's going to be some old ones yielding to make way. I believe that we've got six new ones confirmed so far, there's going to be two additional Shaper data sheets. there was just the one generic one before, that's going to be replaced by three unique ones. There's the Crute Lone Spear, the Lone Operative Cavalry Guy, the Melee Krutox Rampagers with their Violent Krutox Steeds, and now it looks like we're confirmed with an additional two Crisis Suit datasheets to go with the previous one that we had. Again, warning units being replaced by three there, so you're gaining two extra. As it looks like the Tau Codex is only going to have 38, and that means that we need to lose five to make up the numbers. And my guess will be that it's probably going to come from this little list here. The ones most at risk, I'd say, are Ornvar, Ornshi, the Tactical Drones 1, Long Strike, the Tide War and Placements, and the Fireside Sniper Team. Basically, the Necrons had a bit of a Codex precedent where they had quite a lot of special characters in resin. It looks like Games Workshop, as they redo the Codexes, are taking a look at those resin characters, looking at the ones that they're aiming to release plastic miniatures for, and they get to keep their rules and data sheets. the other resin ones being removed. I feel like the Resin Ethereals and Long Strike is a good chance they're going to be phased out, though obviously not confirmed yet. I feel like, if anything, I'd rather lose the data sheets for the Tide Wall compared with some units out of the others. 
But I guess we'll have to wait and see on that front. I guess we'll be getting confirmation of that whenever the content page or the codex leaks. Again, never a particularly good feeling when miniatures that you might have in your collection get their rules removed. Finally, it does look like there's going to be a new combat patrol for the Tau. That was something that seemed very likely already, but the previous article stated that there's only going to be four combat patrol datasheets in the data card set. At the moment, there's five combat patrol datasheets, the Ghost Kill, Stealth Suits, Fire Warriors, and the Ethereal and Fireblaze. That means the set is getting a makeover. I guess we might well get something that's a little bit less stealth. I don't know if Games Workshop are going to be throwing some crew units into the box set there. I feel like a box set with Fire Warriors and Crisis Suits would probably be a good move and a bit of a crowd pleaser. I guess we'll have to wait and see what else they're joined by though. Let me know what you'd hope for for a Tau Empire Combat Patrol. I'll certainly try and cover it here on the channel when we know the details of it. And I guess I'd take this as a bit of a heads up that this one isn't going to be around much longer if you do want the miniatures contained within. I'd probably not be going out to rush out and buy multiple copies if you weren't planning on getting it anyway. Though if you were picking it up, I do have some discount retail links down in the video description. Various places around the world could save you around 10 to 20% off Warhammer on this set. And I support all specs tactics just a little bit too, and the videos I make. In any case though, some big changes for the Tau there. I feel like it's a mix of good stuff and maybe not so good. I must admit I do like the look of the Crisis Suit units. And what we've seen so far, the new detachment looks fun. Hopefully the rest of the rules for the stratagems and enhancements aren't just filler. It will be annoying for people who haven't magnetised their Crisis Suits. I have lots of models with defunct loadouts now. It's always painful when Games Workshop slims down choices. Not the best news with a whole bunch of models likely going to Legends as well. Would be nicer to see at least a few plastic updates for some of those units. I feel like the resin ethereals and plastic could have been quite nice, I guess maybe at a later date. In any case, let me know your thoughts. Look forward to hearing them down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. I'm sure we'll have much more for the towel later in the week. And finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well and you can find that linked in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.